Hey guys, my name is Pierce Brown. I'm the author of The Red Rising Saga, and I'm here today to teach you how to overcome writer's block, at least to the best of my abilities. If I could do it perfectly, well, I'd, I'd probably be writing. First off, get yourself a glass. Second off, get yourself your favorite spirit or a favorite spirit. Pour the glass a moderate amount. Don't get drunk. No one likes a sloppy drunk or a sloppy writer. Take the drink. You are now fortified to ask yourself the question, why does writing matter? Everything going on right now, incomes being threatened, <clears throat> well, general quarantine anxiety, um, fear of loved ones passing, and that's a real one. So why do something as facile as putting ink on a page? Well, because writing is what distinguishes us as a species. It's how we pay, it's how we transfer stories, it's how we transfer emotions. And for me, it's how I've come to grips with almost anything bad that's ever happened in my life. It's a coping mechanism. Now, it doesn't necessarily solve everything, but it does our, help me articulate my id's innermost thoughts. Now, I know my innermost thoughts is a hamster wheel of bullshit, right? Did I pay taxes? Did I pay a parking ticket? Did I blah, 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 blah. Feed the dog. Yes, I fed the dog. But the point is, that all these things can be quieted by understanding oh, where the emotions come from. What is the root of it? Uh, how do you understand the world? How do you ask yourself or you ask a reader a question or you don't know the answer yourself to a question and you pose it in a book or you pose it in a story? That's not what we're dealing with today. What we're dealing with today, even though that's the underlying reasons why writing is good, what we're dealing with today is how the hell do you get over writer's block? First off, I want you to take a character that you have um, can be any character. If you don't have a character, then write in a question mark. Or probably supplant someone from your own life into it. So I'm going to write down a character from my series. The book's called Lysander. Some of you don't like him, some of you like him. I personally have a little affection for the guy. And what I want you to do after that is to draw around this name several lines spanning outward. Very simple. Boom, boom. Well, it's backwards because cameras. And then I want you to write six words. They can be any words, but they have to do with your character. I'm not talking about uh, superficial uh, descriptions of their hair color, their eye color, no adjectives on how pretty they are, no bullshit like that. Do words that that character resonates with, either to you or to that character that the character themselves would resonate with. So, for instance, for Lysander, because he comes from... Well, rather complicated family, um, has noble blood, um, and I, a lot of his story takes place in memory. I'm going to jot down some words like grotto, just because he's wealthy and, you know, well, actually, his associations don't matter. You don't have to explain your associations either. So I write down grotto, summer, stone, hornets. Midnight and blood because he's royal. Now, from that, you should be able to start making a web. Now, this web has more to do with your understanding of the character or perhaps the character's memories than anything tangible really in your story. Because to get over writer's block, it's not necessarily about having to decide which path to take because there's multiple paths and you can't choose. It's not about being out of ammunition or being you know, out of a story to tell. You're not. Uh, it's not about being unenthusiastic about it because that comes in fits and tantrums. It's about understanding your story. It's about understanding what you're trying to say. But more than that, it's about understanding your characters because when you understand your characters, you can understand where tension derives from. And tension is the root of storytelling. Every story out there is the main character wants this, but then this happens, obstacles are put in their way, the most amount of obstacles makes the most, best book usually. But for this particular exercise, all you're really focusing on, on is backstory, feelings, tone, um, zest, the things that create the differentiation between your story and someone else's. So you have, I have Blood, Grotto, Summer, Midnight, 
hornets and stone for Lysander. Now there's two paths available to you. One, you continue building this web out and you do three or four or five word associations that are then based on these word associations. And what you can create for that is uh, memory. You can create uh, uh, almost a uh, character within a character. So the idea, for instance, my ideal uh, future where I'd want to be when I'm 50 is something that I secretly guard and it's a private dream you think of before you go to bed, right? So why doesn't your main character have that? Where does he want to be? So Summer, I would have, say, has a positive connotation with my character. So Summer, it would be flowers and bloom. Flowers, bloom. But here's where it's important to have tension. It's great contrast. Summer can't just have a positive association with this character because he's a tormented bastard. So summer and then uh, it'll be young love tragedy and right there you have the source for a backstory for your character so it says summer flowers bloom young love tragedy while i don't necessarily want to construct a story for you right now because of that now i have a pocket that i can return to as part of lysander's personality now grotto did something happen in a grotto betrayal or was it love? Or perhaps it was contemplation. So when you have a physical descriptor like this, like Grotto, what you're doing is creating a talisman for a character sometimes, or a touchstone. If something happened in this Grotto, or if all Grottos remind this character of this, or if they're has been some positive or even negative association with a grotto in the past, then that character now has a story for grottos. And whenever you enter into a grotto in your story, or even, nah, that's a lazy way of doing it, but the lazy way of doing it, you enter into a grotto and then the character has a flashback, which is the you know advantage of books over screenplays, because, well, screenplays are inherently kind of cheesy doing a flashback, but you can um, extrapolate as you go down. So basically extrapolate... Uh, uh, Lysander walking into a grotto, he had, had a betrayal in his past or witnessed a betrayal of young love. Perhaps he witnessed uh, someone spurn someone else and then that comes back to haunt them. So what you're doing right now is you're basically creating compost for your story. And so you, what I want you to do is to continue going around your original circle of five or six words and then create trees off those. And then decide if you want them to be memories Um, poetic, like internal vignette, which goes to say your old character's overall aspirations, their kind of, for lack of a better word, their id. And then you can go uh, something physical that could happen or something they like or dislike. Now, I don't prefer like or dislike because, you know, there's a lot of those bs printouts online of like what is your character's favorite food and all those kind of things and i don't really think that that brings tension to a story nor do i think it really matters what the favorite food of a character is because i'm not even sure what my favorite food is and i've been a human for 32 years so i'd say it's fairly unimportant in terms of providing fodder for your character because this is what all we're doing is we're creating fodder this compost heap so that you can use it for your character and for your story so for instance Another method I use is once I have all these original six words, is I compile a tonal I compile a tonal poem, and so for this one, with my six words of blood, grotto, summer, midnight, hornets, and stone, I create a poem which serves as a totem or the touchstone, as I talked about, for understanding the character, for understanding their tone that when they tell a story, whether be it melancholy, be it you know fearful, be it aggressive towards the world, be it nihilistic. And Lysander's is somewhat of a melancholy, uh, melancholy view of the past. And that defines him more than his future. So I created a poem for him, which totally makes sense. And it says, down in the midnight grotto, where in summer hornets roam, there is the dripping sound of blood against stone. Now that's gobbledygook, it means nothing. It won't be in my final story, but it helps me figure out what words he used for his character. 
It helps me figure out the tone for his character. It helps me figure out the melancholy. And what is this blood dripping on stone? Is it a positive or negative effect in his life? And so that poem, now put in context to his life, makes me, the writer, the creator of both, who doesn't know <laughs> what either of them mean on their own, can now look at them together, look at the character, look at the memory, look at the poem, look at the other word associations, and start piecing together a person. Because humans are manifold, we're complex. And this breakdown, this word association breakdown, which has its origins in Ray Bradbury's word association breakdown for stories. He would often do it and compile midnight, lightning, thunder, words like that, and then create a story from it. This I found to be far more beneficial because it helps you kill writer's block, not because you know where you're going, but at least you know what, well, you, you don't know where you're going, but you know what you're going with. You know what character you're taking with you. You know their backstory, perhaps. You know what words resonate with them because you can't show a picture of them. All you can do is show words. And I hope this helps you. I hope it somehow creates uh, some sort of catharsis from this quarantine we're all under right now. And I hope it helps jumpstart your stories. And if you have uh, writer's block, try this word association. And even if you don't, try it. Stories might pop out. And maybe I'll be back with creative, uh, creative distancing here soon to give you a few more tips on how to break through the old writer's block. Until then, stay safe.